a very special day, and I have to start it by congratulating Jody and Stacy on 20 years. Wow. Thank, thank you, Facebook. So, um, you know, Pittsburgh has a, a, a strong history in human rights, creating one of the first human rights commissions in this country, well before other states or our federal government even thought about it. Uh, but we still have a long way to go. Uh, we've been together, and I hope that people will apply today for an LBGTQIA plus advisory commission for the city of Pittsburgh. Restoring it there, restoring it to look at everything, not just discrimination when it comes to employment or housing, but economic opportunity, the opportunity to fully participate in everything that we're seeing with the new Pittsburgh. And that's really part of the goal, because we're going to see a lot of change these next 10 years in this city, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But it has to be a change that's for all, for everyone to have an opportunity. You know, when my grandfather came here in the 1920s, the guys that he worked with, they were all guys, you know, in the mills, didn't really have much of an opportunity. But they worked and they formed a union, and they were able to create an economy that was for all. We saw neighborhoods in the city prosper. We've lost that, and now we're rebuilding it. And that has to be a part of our economic development strategy. Recently, I'm sure that you read that PayPal uh, was creating a global operations center in North Carolina. And once the North Carolina legislature started passing discriminatory policies, PayPal decided it wasn't a state of wanting to do business. Well, Pennsylvania is one of the few states that doesn't offer fairness in the workplace or across all of our parts of our state. And it's recognized as well. And it holds us back economically from being able to be as successful as we can be. When we have states like Delaware and Maryland and New Jersey on our border that recognize that equality is a right that's given to you when you're born, but we're afraid to put it in writing, then we have a big problem. And let me explain it to you this way. We pitched PayPal, and I talked with their executives and I tried to bring them to Pittsburgh. And it wasn't because of Pittsburgh, but it was because of Pennsylvania that we were put at the bottom of the list. So it's real. What we talk about is not only the individual's rights, but the ability of a region, a city, a state to prosper. And of rising that up, think of the talent that we lose because of people who recognize that they can be fired from work because of who they love. And that's real. So, We'll continue to move the ball forward. We'll continue, and we've already started with a change in policy of parks and recreation. So you go to the bathroom that you identify with. And Pittsburgh Public Schools recognizing it as well. And we'll continue to push it so that state legislatures start to understand what we're doing isn't really that controversial. And what we're doing is absolutely critical to the lives of individual Pennsylvanians and those that are creating these new jobs and bringing these new jobs to our region. And we'll hit them with their corporate message and ask them if they want to be a state that is at the forefront of 21st century change or the one that will continue to be put at the bottom of the list. So I thank you all for gathering. I know that there's a lot of staff from our office that's here as well. Uh, there are application forms to be a part of this advisory committee that are here. I ask you to participate, and I also offer you this challenge. If you can dream it, you can do it. And if there are ideas that can put this city at the forefront, we will partner with you to make it happen. So thank you. And oh, I didn't even see it. Uh, representatives, we represent Dan Frankel, who's been pushing the Fairness Act. And, yeah. and successful in being able to create some bipartisan support for it now. You know, the real opportunity. Even though the governor signed the executive order, we still need the act to pass. And I also have to recognize our other partner at the federal level, Congressman Mike Doyle. We have a team right now to be able to deliver on different proposals going beyond policies projects, opportunities that are there and that have been there. And we have a team that's ready to do it. So all I ask is 
put your ideas in practice and then give us the opportunity to carry it forward as well. So thank you folks. It's great to have you here. I'm a little out of breath, forgive me. Um, but you guys are keeping a very exacting schedule, which is really good. <laughs> I, I was taking a page on American Duda's playbook and run it just a couple minutes late. So while I catch my breath, let me just say what an honor it is to have you ask me to come and address you this afternoon. Um, it's been a very good couple years. You know, I was uh, pulling my thoughts together about what I might say when I came to speak to you today. And, and I was thinking about just my own life and my own personal experience. And when I came out in 1972, um, I would never have imagined that I would be living in a world where the Supreme Court and the government of the United States would recognize us as full and complete citizens. Right. And the, uh, not to, to give that right, to, but to recognize the right that we are full and complete participants in the American dream. Um, and that um, has been, I think, monumental in, uh, in changing uh, public perception and people's view of what it really means to be LGBTQIA in America in 2016. But as good as the last couple years has been, I don't need to tell you there's still so much left to be done. And there are very important roles for us to play, very important work to be done and steps for us to take to ensure that the gains that we have made are not jeopardized uh, in any way, especially through um, complacency, God forbid. One of the things that clearly comes to mind, I think that we need to uh, keep front and center, um, is the discriminatory, discriminatory practice of the state of Pennsylvania not to recognize LGBTQIA as a protected class. And regardless of the, of the um, inroads that we have made, many of us, if we step outside of uh, our, our uh, cocoons, if you will, can legally be the subject of sanctioned prejudice. Um, and that's something that we cannot stand for and should not stand for and should continue to make uh, the fight for recognition by the state of Pennsylvania a, um, a priority. Uh, something that I never thought I would be talking about uh, would be and something that you'll be considering this afternoon is the importance of aging. And that when I said earlier when I came out in 1972, I didn't imagine that I would be 62 one day and beginning to contemplate what it means to actually be an openly gay man and navigating this world and, and aging in it and what does that look like and what are my responsibilities um, to our community as a whole and, and that, we, um, uh, that we are diligent in, in the work that needs to be done and that we continue to be mindful of those among us that will age with grace and dignity and fighting in every step of the way, but we will. And uh, what role and responsibility do we have in that? And that is something that you'll be considering here this afternoon. And then as an elected official, um, something that I think is incredibly important in, uh, in my role there, but equally important as our roles of uh, uh, members of our community, is how do we bring young ones along after us? And how do we ensure that the paths that we have created and the inroads that we have made um, continue to stay open for them? That we understand the uh, different challenges and pressures and obstacles that young LGBTQIA people are facing today. Violence um, continues to plague 
uh, both young people, especially young transgender people that are working to find their way uh, in the world. And I believe that we have a very uh, important role and an obligation there to play to make certain that we have safeguards in place and, and policies and procedures that will protect those that are coming after us um, and so that their paths and uh, well their paths can just be perhaps maybe a little bit easier than what ours was. So you have a, 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 a big charge ahead of you. I appreciate the facts that you are, the fact that you are here and willing to do heavy lifting. Um, I would add one other thing to your agenda, uh, if I may, when we talk about health and wellness uh, within uh, our community, that we would also consider drug and alcohol addiction. Uh, the numbers are not in our favor. When you look at national averages, about 11% of our population deal with issues of drug and alcohol dependency, but in LGBTQIA circles, we're looking at a number that, as I understand it, to be closer to 33%. And that concerns me as a, I myself am a recovering alcoholic. I'm clean and sober for 28 years. <laughs> it's important to share the message and that people do uh, are able to come out of drug and alcohol addiction in the lives that we like to call uh, happy, sober, and free. And so when we think of health and wellness within our communities, I'd like us to just be ever mindful of that as well. And then before they bring the hook and pull me off of here, uh, those, uh, I would like to challenge those in the room that are of uh, said mind uh, to consider running for public office and how very, very important it is to have members of our community front and center um, making those decisions that directly affect our lives uh, in uh, everlasting ways. And so if you have ever had an inkling ever in your life to consider a role in public service, I ask that you consider that and pursue that because it is very important uh, for our uh, emotional, spiritual, um, and physical health, safety, and well-being to have uh, our community represented as elective leaders. So thank you so very much for having me here today. An honor to be here. I have to run. I apologize. I have a hearing that I have to conduct shortly. But um, again, thank you for having me, and I wish you all the best in your work today.